We've seen a couple of examples of synchronization and it's really cool, but it's not always as simple as it first appears. Let's think back to the spinner system that we looked at as compared to the driver system. There's one big difference between the driver and spinner systems. And with spinners, there is no global synchronization. What do I mean by that? In a driver system, everything converged. But in a spinner system, it's a bit more complicated. Here's a lemma. For any continuous coupling function, for any f from the circle to the reals, the spinner system that you get when you take the phase difference, so in continuous time, d phi equals minus 2 epsilon f of phi, and in discrete time, e phi equals phi minus 2 epsilon f of phi. This system cannot have a stable equilibrium to which all orbits converge. Is that weird? No, that's not so weird. The proof is very, very simple. Let's assume that you have an equilibrium at a certain phase angle, phi star, and let's assume that it's stable. Now, this is an equilibrium. That means that phi star is a root of f. That is f of phi star equals zero. Okay, that's it. That's your equilibrium. Cool. But by stability, f has to take on both positive and negative values near that root. That's what stability means. Think about the diagram. But then, because this is a function from the circle to the reals, by continuity, there has to be another root where it goes from being positive back to being negative or vice versa. That other root, that's a different equilibrium. It's an unstable equilibrium. And that means that not everything can converge to that stable equilibrium, whether it's a synchronized state or not. Okay, maybe it would be worthwhile to look at a specific example. So let's think about the simplest coupling function we can have on the circle. This is going to be, um, I think, sine phi. That's, that's pretty simple. With that coupling function, what do we have? In continuous time, we have d phi equals minus 2 epsilon sine phi. In discrete time, we have e phi equals phi minus 2 epsilon sine phi. Let's just take a look at what we get. Let's solve for the equilibria. When I set minus 2 epsilon sine phi equal to 0, well, I just look for where sine vanishes. This vanishes at 0 and pi and minus pi and 2 pi and really any multiple of pi. But because we're on the circle, there's really only two equilibria one at zero, and one at, if you like, plus or minus pi. doesn't matter. It's the same point on the circle. Now, to classify the stability, we look at the derivative of the right-hand side. In continuous time, that's minus 2 epsilon cosine of phi. In discrete time, it's 1 minus 2 epsilon cosine of phi. Remember, we're taking the derivative with respect to the variable phi. Now, let's apply the stability criterion. When epsilon is a small positive number, then what are we going to get? We're going to get a stable equilibrium at phi equals 0. We're going to get an unstable equilibrium at phi equals plus or minus pi. This unstable equilibrium is very interesting. What does it mean to have phi plus or minus pi? It means that you are not synchronized. It means that you are anti-synchronized. Your two spinners are perfectly out of phase. And this is also an equilibrium for the system. If you start in that state, you stay in that state, although it is unstable. I wonder what happens if we start changing things. What happens if we have non-identical agents? Let's start with drivers. Let's say that we have a pair of drivers Let's keep it simple. Let's say the coupling function is linear. f of phi is phi. Then in continuous time, we have a system dx1 equals omega plus epsilon phi, dx2 equals omega minus epsilon phi. You've got the similar thing in discrete time where you have the x1 or the x2 on the right-hand side as well. But in this case, let's say that those two speeds, omega, are different. We have omega-1 for the first driver, omega-2 for the second driver. 
what happens when we have different natural speeds. You might think, well, they're moving at different speeds, and epsilon is really small, so I, I guess they just keep moving at different speeds. Let's do the math. Let's look at phi, that is x2 minus x1, and on the continuous time side, we have d phi equals omega 2 minus omega 1 minus 2 epsilon phi. In discrete time, the system we get is e phi equals phi plus omega 2 minus omega 1 minus 2 epsilon phi. I'm going to leave it to you to do a tiny bit of algebra and show that this has an equilibrium at omega 2 minus omega 1 over 2 epsilon and furthermore, it is stable. The drivers are locked into this constant state difference. Now notice that when omega 2 equals omega 1, this stable equilibrium is at 0. But when those two speeds are different, and depending on the value of epsilon, this stable equilibrium might be very far away from 0. So you've got these two drivers, and they're doing their thing, they're going along, but what happens is that small coupling term turns on and it pulls them together until they get into a locked state where there's a constant state difference between the two. That is what locking looks like. Let's repeat that same analysis for a spinner system where now we have theta 1, theta 2, they're both evolving, but they each have their own natural speeds, angular speeds, omega 1 and omega 2. We're going to use a simple coupling function, in this case sine of phi. Now you can check that the resulting 1D system on the phase angle phi is the same that we had before, but with phi, that coupling function being replaced by sine of phi. So we have d phi equals omega 2 minus omega 1 minus 2 epsilon sine phi, and we have e phi equals phi plus omega 2 minus omega 1 minus 2 epsilon sine phi. This has an equilibrium at, well, it's the same math. You've got that omega 2 minus omega 1 over 2 epsilon, but now what we need to do is take the arc sine of that. And at this point, you have to be a little bit careful because we're on a circle and arc sine can take on multiple values. There are often going to be a pair of equilibria, one stable, one unstable. But for certain values of the omegas, of epsilon, there might not be an equilibrium at all. Arc sine has a limited domain. When you do have a stable equilibrium, this is called phase locking. It's a very important behavior. Synchronization is different than locking. With sync, everything evolves to a spinner system where they're going through the exact same angle at the same time, same speed. With phase locking, eventually they're moving at the same speed, but there's a constant angular difference between those two spinners. Synchronization, locking, these are both really common phenomena in coupled systems. You've got to be a little bit careful. Always be sure you're looking at that coupling function carefully and be especially cautious when you're working with angular variables.